Right up. Enjoying the study of Proverbs. I don't know about you, but I am really, I'm really digging on that. <laughs> I love Proverbs. It's like you can just feel yourself getting wiser as you as you go through it. You know, you're learning, and it's really important information to learn. Love it, love it. Okay, we are picking up our study of Genesis in chapter five. Are you ready? Verse one. Well, you know, I wanted to let you know, we're going through Genesis here. Um, it's one of the most prophetic books in the entire word of God. Genesis. The Lord says that he declares the end from the beginning. Let me show you where. Turn over, keep your spot there in Genesis. Turn over to Isaiah 46, 9 through 11. Remember the former things of old, for I am God and there is none else. I am God and there is none like me. He is the only one of his kind. In verse 10, declaring the end from the beginning. That's why we're going back to the beginning, to Genesis, and we're going to see what prophetic elements we can uncover while the king takes us through the beginning, and we're going to see if we can see the parallels uh, from, to our time. Declaring the end from the beginning and from ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying, my counsel shall stand, and I will do all my pleasure. He is going to have it his way. Now, if you think that you get it your way, you are mistaken, <laughs> Okay. You only get it your way if your way is uh, the same way God's going. If it's his way, you'll get your way. But if it's not his way, you won't. He always gets his way. Calling a ravenous bird from the east, the man that executeth my counsel from a far country, yea, I have spoken it, I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it, and I will also do it. What he's saying is a mouthful here because he's saying he talks to the animals. He can talk to the birds. He talks to the whales, the one that went and swallowed Jonah. He talks to the ravens that went and fed Elijah. He talked to the donkey that spoke uh, in a man's voice to Balaam. He communicates with the animals and they understand him and they obey him. The man that executeth my counsel from a far country, he can call anybody anywhere on the planet and they will do exactly what he wants. Okay. Yea, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. Every jot and tittle he has written will happen exactly like he said. I have purposed it. I will also do it. You know, that's a really good passage right there in Isaiah 46, 9 through 11 to learn get it in here and in here so you can uh you can refer to it 
Now, we're getting into chapter 5 of the book of Genesis, and we're starting in verse 1. Are you ready? This is the book of the generations of Adam. In the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. You remember he said, let us make man in our image. When he's saying our, see God's only one of his kind, so what's he saying our? Our is implying more than one, okay? But God is the only one of his kind. So what, what is he saying? He's saying that on the outside, man shares the image of the body that God created for himself, like Jesus, okay? And on the inside, we are the likeness of the invisible God on the throne. So we're like the invisible God in here, and on the outside, we're like the body he created for himself. That's a dual thing. So he says, in the day that God created man, in the likeness of God made he him. Now that was Adam, not those he created before Adam. See, Adam wasn't the first man. Adam was the first of his kind, the first of our kind, okay? But there were other humanoids on the earth and outside the garden. When God formed Adam, planted the garden, and put Adam in it. They were just flesh, like the tares now. Human bodies without, um, without a child of God living inside it. Okay, no temple for God uh, on the inside of their bodies. So they're basically just another form of animal from God's perspective. Now, Adam is different. He's, he's evolved higher because God breathed life. Who's, whose life? Jesus said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. He breathed Jesus into Adam. And that into Adam, you had the temple, the first person who had the temple of God inside them. And when he separated Adam and Eve, she had it, he had it. But when Cain was born, he didn't have it. He was an example of those who are born without the temple inside them, flesh only. And he ended up leaving his family to go and dwell with the rest of them outside the garden who did not have the temple of God inside them either. They were like him. He was like them. Okay, let's keep going. In verse 2, male and female created he them. And blessed them and called their name Adam. See, they too were one flesh before God separated them. Adam is the intellect. Eve is the emotion. Okay. Um, they called their name Adam. That's interesting wording, isn't it? In the day when they were created. In verse 3. And Adam lived 130 years and begat a son in his own likeness and after his image. Now notice, he begat a son in his own likeness and after his image. This would be, after his own likeness would be, he had the temple inside him. This son that it's talking about now. And because no, he's begat, a son in his own likeness, which is what's on the inside, and after his image. So he looked like he looked like Adam, only a little mini me, but he had the temple inside him just like Adam did. And called his name Seth. In verse four, and the days of Adam after he had begotten Seth were eight hundred years. So look how old Adam is. Adam lived 130 years and begat Seth. And then he lived, so Adam lived uh, 130 years, and then he begot Seth. And he, he lived, after he had begotten Seth, 800 years. So he lived to be 930 years old. <laughs> Adam did. Okay? 
930 years old, Adam was. And he begat sons and daughters. So he, after Cain slew Abel, and both of those were lost because Cain was cast out to go live with uh, those without the temple inside them, like he was. A Abel died, left or left the simulation, possibly, if it's a simulation. And then he was given another son, Seth. And after that, he begat sons and daughters. He had many. Adam and Eve had many sons and daughters. In verse 5, And all the days that Adam lived were 930 years, and he died. 930 years old. You know, during the millennium, people are going to be living to be, uh, they're going to be able to live 900 and something years again because the Lord's going to restore the climate that was present on the earth at that time. And it's the climate that causes you to live longer like that. In verse 6, And Seth lived 105 years and begat Enos. And Seth lived after he begat Enos 807 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Seth were 912 years and he died. So Seth lived 912 years. It was common to live 900 and something years back then. <coughs> Excuse me. In verse 9, and Enos that's the son of Seth, lived 90 years and begat Canaan. Now notice these descendants, they are not having any children until they're almost 100 years old or more. Um, you know, Seth lived 105 years before his first son was born. And so what this tells us is an Enos, his son, lived 90 years before he ever had his first son. So the way things were then, you were like a child until you were close to 100. <laughs> Isn't that amazing? Takes you 100 years to reach adulthood? In verse 10, and Enos lived after he begat Canaan 815 years and begat sons and daughters. In verse 11, and all the days of Enos were 905 years and he died. So Enos, he lived 905 years. <clears throat> That's amazing, isn't it? And Canaan lived 70 years and begot Mahalalil. Don't ask me to say that again. <laughs> Now, this, this one's a teenager when he's a teen parent <laughs> because he's only 70 years old when he has his first son. <laughs> and Canaan lived after he begat Mahalalil. <laughs> Thank you, my king. <laughs> 840 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Canaan were 910 years and he died. And Mahalalil lived 60 and five years and begat Jared. Finally, a name we can like say. <laughs> and uh, he's going to make me say it again, isn't he? <laughs> I just got lucky the first few times. Okay, in verse 16. <laughs> and Mahalalil lived after he begat Jared. 830 years and begat sons and daughters. <laughs> In verse 17 of chapter 5, and all the days of... <laughs> He's going to make me say it again. <laughs> you have a wonderful sense of humor, my king. <laughs> and all the days of Mahalalil were 890 and five years and he died. So as you can see, you're getting a little bit shorter with each one because you've got Adam at 930, Seth at 912, Enos at 905. Then you've got Canaan. He's 910. So he's just a little bit more. And then 
Mahalalil. <laughs> now, he doesn't break 900 years. He lives 895 years, and then he dies. 895. In verse 18 of Genesis chapter 5, And Jared lived 162 years, and he begat Enoch. 162 before he had his first son. And he begat Enoch. Now, this is the Enoch who vanished. He was a preacher of righteousness. He was pleasing to God, and God took him. He was alive, and God took him. He was the first rapture, okay? And verse 19, And Jared lived after he begat Enoch 800... 800 years, and begat sons and daughters. So now we're down to 800 years on this one. In verse 20, and all the days of Jared were 962 years. Oh, I'm sorry, that's my bad. 962 years. That's almost, he almost holds the record for the oldest man ever. He was 962 years old, and Methuselah was 969 years old, I believe, and he was the oldest. So this one, he came within seven years of being the oldest person that ever lived. In verse 21, and Enoch lived 60 and five years and begat Methuselah. And Enoch walked with God after he begat Methuselah 300 years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Enoch were 365 years. Now, what you're saying, well, wait a minute. This one didn't live to be eight or 900 years old. Oh, this one's lived to be uh, 6,000 years old because at his days were 365 years, but he didn't die. In verse 24, and Enoch walked with God. And he was not, for God took him. God raptured him. He didn't die. He got raptured. Okay? Now, notice, Enoch was not taken to heaven. He was not taken to heaven. The word says that no one has ascended or descended. Ascended from uh, to heaven or descended from heaven. Except the king. Let me get you that scripture so we can prove that. Uh, we got to prove all things like the word says. Um, let's see. What was I after, my king? I just lost my train of thought. Uh, okay. He must not want me to go there. Uh, I just totally lost what, where I was going with that. Okay, Enoch walked with God, and he was not, for God took him. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, this is not the Enoch. Um, oh, it was the descending and ascending. Thank you, my king. I guess you do want me to go there after all. None have descended or ascended. Let me get that scripture for you. I just... It's my sometimers. It just totally, the, the thought just totally left me all of a sudden. And But he gave it back to me. <laughs> I need him for everything. Okay. Now I'm looking at the term ascended. Oh, I love this. Now in Proverbs 30 verse 4, who hath ascended? up into heaven or descended who hath gathered the wind in his fists who hath bound the waters in a garment who hath established all the ends of the earth what is his name and what is his son's name if thou canst tell see it's talking about jesus in the old testament now watch this john 3 13 and no man hath ascended up to heaven but he that came down from heaven, even the son of man, which is in heaven. Okay. Um, this say in Acts 2.34, it says, for David is not ascended into the heavens. But he saith himself, the Lord said unto my Lord, sit thou on my right hand. 
Um, let's see. In Ephesians 4, 9, now that he ascended, what is it but that he also descended first into the lower parts of the earth? Um, in Ephesians 4, 10, he that descended is the same also that ascended up far above all heavens that he might feel all things. So nobody has ascended bodily into heaven except the king. Nobody has descended into hell except the king. Okay. As far as descending, it's not, it's he descended into hell, not like the children of evil. He's the almighty God. He descended to the lower parts, made an open display of Satan and his minions, and then took the keys of hell and death and then ascended again. Okay. Nobody's like him. Nobody is like him. But let's talk about Enoch for a second. This is not the same Enoch that wrote the book of Enoch. The book of Enoch was written by Enoch, the son of Cain. Do you remember when we uh, went through the genealogy of Cain? Over here uh, in verse 18 of Genesis chapter 4. Uh, in verse in Genesis chapter 4, 17, and Cain knew his wife and she conceived and bare Enoch and he built a city and called the name of the city after the name of his son Enoch. So see, Cain's son Enoch is the one that wrote the book of Enoch. You want to stay away from it. Okay. It's uh, not, God does not want us to become too familiar with the ways of evil, but the book of Enoch tells you about the fallen, tells you their names, uh, things that you don't need to know and that it's better if you don't know. Okay. So we've established that the book of Enoch is not this same Enoch who was raptured. Okay. Now in verse 24 of Genesis chapter five and Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. Okay. Where did God take him? I think he took him to the garden of Eden. Um, I think that's where Lazarus and Jairus's daughter and all of those who rose when Jesus was resurrected. I believe that they are being kept in the garden of Eden, which is hidden somewhere here on the earth. Um, I, I think it's there, but you can't see it unless you are regenerated. Okay. If Jesus Christ raises you, you're never going to die again. And these people cannot ascend into heaven having been regenerated or preserved alive. Like in the case of Enoch, and in the case of Elijah, Elijah was taken. It says he was taken into heaven by a, a whirlwind. Well, he couldn't have gone into the third heaven. What it meant is he went into the sky, that heaven. Okay. Uh, because the word says that he can't have ascended. That only, only Jesus has done that. Now, you can go into heaven if you depart from your body, but you can't go into heaven with your body. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. All right. And Enoch is flesh and blood still. He's never died. So is Elijah. Elijah's never died. And um, Enoch walked with God and he was not for God took him. But that's, that's a possibility. And the reason I think that's a, the best possibility that he could be in the Garden of Eden is because that is where the tree of life is and you have to have access to the tree of life if you've never died and been regenerated, okay? So that's why nobody dies in the Holy City when we're all evacuated is because we have access to the tree of life there. We're going to live. Nobody dies in the Holy City. In chapter 6 of Genesis, verse 25, 
And Methuselah lived in 187 years and then begat Lamech. And Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 782 years and begat sons and daughters. So see, Enoch uh, begat Methuselah and then he was taken. God took him. And then Methuselah begat Lamech. And in verse 26, and Methuselah lived after he begat Lamech 780 and two years and begat sons and daughters. And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years and he died. Now, 969 years. That is the max. That's nobody has lived longer than 969 years. Well, except like Enoch and Elijah, who's never died yet. Um, now, an interesting uh, story that I have heard, but uh, it was I, I studied it. I read it somewhere, um, but I can't remember where right now. That said, Methuselah is a picture of God's great mercy toward people. Okay, because Methuselah, God said that Methuselah, um, that when Methuselah dies, the flood would come. And Methuselah lived longer than anybody else ever has, which shows God's great long suffering and mercy before he brings destruction on a wicked world. Methuselah died and then the very next day the flood came. It started raining, okay? In verse 27, And all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and he died. And he was the one that lived the longest, 969. And then Jared was next at 962. In verse 28, And Lamech lived 182 years and begat a son. And he called his name Noah, saying, This same shall comfort us concerning our work and toil of our hands because of the ground which the Lord hath cursed. We're going to take a quick break and when we come back we'll start again in Genesis chapter 5 verse 30. 